Hey everyone, welcome to the Single Player Experience Podcast, the premier podcast for single player gamers to find about good single player games to play and to hear about dope people playing single player games. As always, I'm your host, Sebastian Molden, and joining me today is a very special guest who I've been ready to get on this podcast for a very hot minute now. I met him at PAX. He's another creator from my neck of the woods in Texas, and we hit it off right off the bat, so I'm excited to have him on the show. So joining me today is a content creator. He is a he does deep dive interviews with devs. He also talks and reviews video games. This guy knows his stuff, man. So joining me is the wonderful, the sensational, the next avatar, DDS618. Hey, man, how you doing today? I'm doing fantabulous, man. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. So how was the intro? I just want to make sure I got it all right. Is that that a good one? I, I need to get a recording of that. That way, anytime <laughs> my wife is mad at me, be like, look, Sebastian said, you know, I'm, I'm all this. You can't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put you on a pedestal that high to defend you against the, <laughs> against the misses. Because God knows, like, I can't even defend myself against mine. So. <laughs> Man, I got you. Just tell me what to say. I got you. All right. I got you. I got you. I got you. So, how you, so how's everything going today? Uh, today is going well, man. Watching the uh, WNBA game, the Dallas Wings were winning. The last yeah. I saw, my girl Enrique was killing it. Yeah, Shout out to the Wings. threes, you know, just like I taught her. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, so, yeah, like, as of this recording, we're deep into the uh, WNBA season is kicking off strong. Um, I, you know, like that's kicking off strong we also have the nba playoffs that's going on right now which is you know shout out to all four teams remaining like man it's been a fun time in basketball it really has yeah it definitely has you know uh kind of weird seeing lebron and going against father time now but yeah it, it, it's been fun watching uh definitely watching that miami heat team man they they, they scrappy boy they scrappy for real <laughs> I mean, you you overcome ty- losing Tyler Hero mm-hmm. and Victor Oladipo, and you're still like beating the number one team, and now you're beating the num- number two team. It's, it's it's amazing. It really is, and like it, to to their credit, like they lost, like you said, they lost Hero, they they lost um, Oladipo, but they came into this post like this postseason being the worst three point shooting team in the regular season, and now they're just lighting it up on fire, and it's all behind like Jimmy Butler, like. He's taking a team of, I, you know, no offense to them, but, like, there are some people who barely made rosters in the NBA uh, on that yeah. team, and they are showing out, man, and they're earning their contracts. And, right. man, it's fun Definitely. to watch. It oh, is yeah, yeah. absolutely fun to watch. So <laughs> I got to ask you, on the gaming side of the fence, you know, like, I, I told a little bit about you in the intro, but for the people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah, I'm DDS618. I am a chaotic content creator i call myself chaotic because i like to troll people Mm -hmm. and then i get trolled back so it's all in fun all in fair uh i guess it's all fun and fair that's what i'm trying to say but uh yeah i play a plethora of games i'm not like the guy that only plays apex that only plays you know call of duty Mm -hmm. sometimes i'll play uh call of duty one day and then next day i'm playing city skyline i'm i'm very well-rounded you know because i i uh did used to try i tried to be and i give so much props to everybody that only plays one game i give y'all way more props than a lot of other people because i tried it i tried <laughs> it for i think three months straight i was playing nothing but apex and i became so toxic and so bitter i said this is not me this is not why i got into content creation because my 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 uh main purpose whether it's through an interview whether it's through uh, a live stream whether it's through a uh, game review or whatever i just want to make you smile at the end of the day because it's so much crap going on outside of the world like outside of these four walls i mean right now it's, it's a yeah. lot of crap going on and if i can you can come to my content and you can just kind of forget about it for an hour or two, whatever, I, I did my job. I did my job. Man, I like that. I like that. And I'm like you. I can't play this. I can't play only the same game over and over again. Like, I it, I will burn out. Like, that's who I am <laughs> as a gamer. Like, I, for one thing, I'm not, like, you know, like, I'm not that type of gamer who's going to be a huge, like, I, Apex player or, like, you know, like, you know, multi-game, like, multiplayer kind of gamer. I'm not that guy either, but, like, 
I need some diversity. Like I dip in this like city skylines as well. Shout out to the second game coming out this year. I'm so excited, what? by the way. Somebody else like city skylines? Let's oh go. my goodness. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I'm starting to think it's a chocolate thing. Cause like I talked to a couple of other like creators and they're like, man, I'll be all city skylines. And I'll be like, man, tell like I didn't know it, it like city skylines represented the chocolate community as much as it did because like right man i had 142 hours played on that. i just looked it up what yeah you are on it <laughs> yeah you're on it too yeah, yeah i, I love game. that game i really do um uh, i and the crazy thing is like i like the beginning of that game almost just as much as any other game because like i like the start of starting that city i liked like the nuances of um like developing my road and developing the power plant for the first time and trying to see yeah. like how quickly I can build up and such like that. So I find myself like starting over a city like very frequently in that game. Yeah, I, I if I get back on it today without thinking about, mm -hmm. I'm definitely starting over a city. So it's yeah, so I get fun. it. It's so yeah, fun. It's, it's too much fun for whatever reason. It's a little bit too addictive, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. So I got to ask you, um, for the people who don't know, like what other type of games do you play mostly? Who? Uh, I'm, I'm getting back into my RPG games. Um, I kind of got away from it. Um, I don't know why, but that's where you get the most reactions out of me. Like I've been playing uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor uh, lately. That game is great a lot of mm -hmm. fun it's a little too much fun by the way um <laughs> like i will be getting on uh final fantasy 16 i cannot mm -hmm. wait for that game to drop uh that comes out next month i know for sure i'm getting on uh um the other game it's another game that comes out next month i know diablo, diablo. 4 comes out. yeah yeah i'm, I'm kind of i've never played diablo i've seen people play it i'm kind of mm -hmm. like on the fence because i'm like okay i've never really played it but i did see diablo Three is mm -hmm. on sale on Xbox for like twenty bucks, so I may just buy that and play that. Give it a test run. Yeah, yeah, give it a test run. Um, but yeah, man, I, I play my, one. One of my favorite genres is like city builders or where I can build things, um, mm -hmm. like two point hospital, two point campus. Love it. Like those those mm -hmm. kind of games. Yeah, but uh, when I'm streaming, it's normally a uh, uh, either a shooter, Minecraft. Or uh RPG game, like a story game. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I, I'm assuming what kind of um consoles are are you more of a console gamer, more of a PC gamer, or a mixture of all all of the above? <laughs> so it's funny, I used to swear I would never be strictly a PC gamer. I was like, I'm <laughs> always gonna be console. <laughs> like no matter what it's 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 uh like I have the Nintendo Switch, I have the Xbox series X and I got the PS5. I was like, I'm just strictly console. Mm -hmm. Then I built a supercomputer. <laughs> 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 I, I got the AMD uh, 7900 Red mm -hmm. Devil. I think that's what it is. Um, I got that as my graphics processor. And that thing is so good. And it and then it's also the PC mods. Like you get to mod your games and stuff. I, I'm I'm starting to become more of a PC gamer. And it, what? It, it's weird. It's weird to me. Like, like literally... Uh, one of my friends, we were just talking about a uh, uh, AEW fight forever, fire forever. Mm -hmm. and I was like, "I'm probably gonna get that on PC." And I'm thinking mods, like, because I have WWE 2K on Xbox. Mm -hmm. I'm now I'm sitting here like, man, I probably want to get it on PC because of the I've seen how they modded it and they mod certain interests and uh, music into it. I'm like. Starting to become more of a PC guy. It's weird. <laughs> I, man, it happens in life. We we live, we grow, we we dive into different things as we grow older. You know, like I've, you know, like ever since I started reviewing games and such like that, like that was kind of my entry into PC gaming as well. That and like CD like CD Skylines, I played like the PC version. I've also played like um um Civilization quite a bit. Like I love Civilization, oh, yeah, yeah. and that's like strictly I strictly play that on PC, but like, so yeah, I'm, I'm like one of those console gamers who like dabbles in PC every once in a while, but like, I can't claim that I'm a just native PC gamer at that point, but it's funny you mentioned the AEW fight forever. Cause like, that's a game that I'm kind of looking forward to as well, even though like we, it, like it had all the momentum in the world and it kind of went media silent for a little bit. Yeah. Way, way too silent. I, I think that's also from the uh, CM Punk 
the incident. Least incident. Yeah. yeah. So they kind of because CM Punk was supposed to be the cover athlete for the game, and now he's not. So I think that kind of played into it, and maybe they just said, let's just focus on finishing the games. I think too many times they announce a game, they get you all hype about it, mm-hmm. and then you start seeing the gameplay trailers, you're like, you see yeah. the actual gameplay, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is not what I thought yeah. it would be. Yeah. yeah. yeah so and- I think that, that may be why it went silent. I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and I know they had uh, uh, like some trouble with the ratings. Um, I know they were trying to push um, for. I think they were like given an M rating in some in some regions, and I know they were trying to push for a T as close as possible. So I think right. that could be a factor that kind of played into that as well. But it's interesting though. Like, um, it's interesting you mentioned AEW because like it is like the WWE two K games then went through their high the highs right now with um two K twenty two and then two K twenty three and then their lows with two K twenty a couple of years ago, which is probably one of the worst <laughs> wrestling games I've ever played in my life. But uh, I, it was so bad. It was, it was, but it's it like I'm curious, like what's the hype level for you for AEW Fight Forever? Um, right now is is it's mid. Um, mm-hmm. The reason being is I haven't seen enough about it. Like uh, I've seen screenshots, and obviously everybody compared to two uh, K twenty three yeah. WWE game, but I'm looking at it like okay, look, it's a brand new game. You can't look at it like WWE two K twenty three. Like you wouldn't go look at uh, Wrestle Quest or Wrestle Story and compare it to WWE two K twenty three. It's not the same game. So I'm separating that lens from <laughs> it. But I'm I'm hoping they do have like a creator wrestler or they have uh where you can download like some of the things WWE 2K has mm-hmm. that makes it so good. Um I'm hoping they at least let you create wrestlers. That's kind of why I'm wanting to get on PC because if they don't, maybe somebody will mod it into that. Yeah, <laughs> you should add wrestlers to the roster. Cause um I, I, I miss I miss I wish games were more like uh I think it's Fire Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Okay, they still call it like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like how you can have, I don't even know what the mass is, like hundreds of additional rats. Now, obviously, if you don't know what Fire Pro is, uh, they have pixels, uh, wrestlers, mm-hmm. so it's a little bit easier to add those. But I think it's it's time we had a wrestling game where it's like NBA 2K. I mean, we can have all those graphics with NBA 2K with each player, face scan, all that kind of stuff. I can't even have that with a wrestling game. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, and and to the um, Fire Pros rest like credit, they do very well with their pixel graphic art style. They also um, like you said, because it's pixel art, like the the foul size for these wrestlers aren't big at all. Like, uh, I think most of them are like maybe even a couple of like maybe a couple of megabytes here and there. So I'm like, you can get uh, you can get an expansive roster out of that. But you know, like two right. K does give you a very good um um to a video game like it does give you a good downloading um spear for the created characters and in, in, especially in 2k23 but like um aw i think they do have the creator wrestler mode i know they have a in creator met wrestler it looks like you have a career mode which will f- feature the story oh. mode i'm reading right here it also looks like you have a um no gm mode sadly i wish i wish we had a gm, oh. GM mode but it looks like you have that and arcade mode so you know a okay. little light on the modes there but you know i'm i'm hoping for the best with that game yeah i mean it's, it's brand new entry new ip so yeah i wouldn't expect the gm mode i mean i think what 2k20 didn't have one or no no like yeah. the 2k21 uh, like 2k22 was the first one that had a gm mode probably since like i want to say like here comes not here comes the pain but maybe like 2k12 it it, yeah, it it had been like almost like a that. decade, yeah, yeah, and that was horrible. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but at least like uh, or maybe I'm, th- I'm thinking universe mode. Like, like yeah, at they least do have, have a. Mode. It, it's something about even if you because I know a lot of people do to my gym, but having a universe mode where you get to create your shows, like on WWE 2K23, I have uh, Raw, uh, NXT 2.0, uh, main event is a main show now. And then SmackDown, and then I have like a hundred downloaded. I'm literally out of slots. <laughs> I can't download anybody else. I, I have to make sure I get like my indie wrestlers, like uh, uh, Bounty Key, uh-huh. uh, uh, 
uh, Ninja Mac, and I had to get some of those indie wrestlers. The high end is in there. Mm-hmm. Then I had to get some of the AEW wrestlers and Impact. So I have a nice diverse roster. Even some people from New Japan. So oh, that's really cool. It, it, it's 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 fun running universe and seeing, say, like Seth Rollins versus uh, Okada. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's fun seeing that. So I, I hope AEW does add that. If they don't have it this this game, I understand. Brand new IP. I get it. But then that's when I, I need to have that. <laughs> I understand, especially considering they're partnered with New Japan with Forbidden Door and all that kind of stuff. You know, like you can get Tanahashi and Okada and all the and all these like OGs in there like that. So um right. I wanna especially with Ring of Honor, like at least we could put Ring of Honor in there. You own yeah. Ring of Honor, you know? You know, oh, that's so a sm- that's a good point. Yes. Yeah. I was like, you own Ring, Ring of Honor. You can at least put that in there as well. I know it's called AEW Fight Forever, but, you know, like, I right. would, I personally, like, it, it just in real life, I would love to see Ring of Honor be more of a developmental system, almost like the re- NXT, you know, so, so to speak. Because, yeah. uh, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not historically, like, super invested in Ring of Honor like a whole lot of people. So, but I would love a reason to invest in a younger more like a younger roster of people and then maybe a couple of like OG Ring of Honor vets, you know? Yeah, I can see that. That would be good. I, I actually thought <laughs> Ring of Honor was going to end up getting bought by WWE, but that's, yeah, that didn't happen, which is good because I think competition is good. Like, I know a lot of people say, oh, AEW should put WWE out of business, or WWE should put AEW. I think that's stupid. Like, mm-hmm. we need that competition because AEW is forcing WWE to make changes, and WWE is forcing AEW to make changes, which that's great for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. It really is. It really is. We're feasting over here as, as gamers, especially as gamers and as, like, wrestling fans. You know, like, we, we're getting the best of both worlds, and, you know, yes. like, AEW is a very different product than WWE and vice versa. Like, they're very different. They have very different wrestling styles like yeah. there are there are people getting dropped on their heads in AEW and I was just like that wouldn't fly over there in WWE no, no. like you don't even see a pal driver anymore in WWE but oh, I'm like nah, nah. no but you see one almost every week in AEW like but so it's a, it's a little different um I gotta I gotta ask you though like you, you are interested in AEW Fight Forever, which is like a game that's rumored to be coming out in a couple weeks as of this recording. Like, what other games are you super excited for right now? Are you into Street Fighter or anything? That, that I was just thinking about Street Fighter. I was mm-hmm. like, that does because that was the other game that comes out next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I haven't played the beta, I need to. I'm, I've never really been too into fighting games. Me neither. Uh, that's not like wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. or Super Smash. Now, nah, I'll. I, 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 I'll, I'll play Super Smash, but I ain't gonna say I'm gonna whoop everybody. <laughs> nah, I'll play Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> but I'm not uh, hugely in, like I'm not a pro fighter. Like I think the last fighting game I played was Mortal Kombat 10. Yeah, yeah. like I have. And here's the thing: I have uh, 11. I own 11. Still haven't played it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I am very interested in Mortal Kombat One. Uh, that, that looks, looks fun. Really it good. looks good. I love the the cinematic. Um, trailer that we got you know that looked really good yeah and and gory it's mm-hmm. they, they really stepped up the gore which is good but uh yeah uh, as far as like next month or coming in upcoming months um i am interested to see uh starfield see what they do uh definitely like i said i definitely get in final fantasy 16 i'm a huge final fantasy fan so I'm getting in it. Uh, I probably can't tell right there. That's cloud mm-hmm. sitting right there. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm I'm very uh, interested. I was at the past East panel for Final Fantasy 16, which seeing that because I, I was worried about Final Fantasy 16 when they first showed up. Like okay, mm-hmm. it's very dark, a little different from what I'm used to. A little I, more I medieval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh no, man. But I I think they did a great job with it. So. I'm going to play it regardless and have fun. I'm going, no expectations, and just have a great time. That sounds good. That sounds good. I mean, you know, I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy person. Um, Like, I've dabbled. I played Final Fantasy VII Part One. Um, I also, you know, played... I played the OG, uh, like, you know, like, the um pixel uh, versions of Final Fantasy, like, one, one yeah. and two. And then I played, um, what was it? not 14, but 15, where it was, like, the Backstreet Boys Final Fantasy, where, like, the four guys were 
<laughs> we're the driving Best around. Boys, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what it felt like. It was almost like the boy yeah. band um Final Fantasy. I played that one. Um, you know, I played that one pretty well. And and I haven't really dove into any other of the Final Fantasy games. It's it's sort of like a little gap in my video game resume, if you will. But I'm excited. Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a definitely check out 16 and hopefully it lives up to the hype. Right. It better. <laughs> <laughs> I need it to, man. And you know, the crazy thing is, like, you know, for better or for worse, this year has been stacked, like stacked with good games, especially on the AAA <laughs> level. You look at um like we started off this year, like it, it was kind of a slower start, and then like like Xbox Shadow Drop High Fire Rush. Um yeah. we got Hogwarts Legacy, and then we got um we got Hogwarts Le- Legacy, then people were into Dead Space, like the Dead Space mm-hmm. remake. Then people were into um what was it? Um Metroid. Metroid got shadow dropped. People were into, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Metroid Prime remaster. And then people and Zelda were, just came out. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom just came out as of you know, as of this recording. I think we it's been out for one week, approximately one week, and people are losing their minds over Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I so right. that that brings up an interesting question. Have you been playing it? No, I have not. I still okay. I know mm-hmm. people are gonna judge me for this, and it's fine. I've owned Zelda Breath of the Wild since it came out. I have not played it. Whoa, you never touched it? it. I, I, I touched it for like maybe, I don't consider playing it uh, mm-hmm. because I only played it for like two, three hours. I don't consider that as, oh, I played the game because yeah. it's a long, long game. So I I, I I know I need to go play it. Like I need to, uh, Octopath Traveler 2 came out. I haven't played mm-hmm. the first one yet. <laughs> I just, just got the first one probably last month. But I, I need to go play the first one, man. I'm, I'm my backlog is so bad because there was a point because um, I had the Xbox console. Mm-hmm. I would if the game went on sale and it dropped below a certain amount, and I was slightly interested in it, I would buy it. <laughs> so I have over a thousand Xbox games. Yeah, that, yeah, it's, it's a stacked backlog. From, yeah. <laughs> And and my friends would always be like, "You buying all these games and they were playing." I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know." And and they they finally taught me how to buy all the games. Like, you waste the money if you're not going to go play all these games. I'm like, "You got a point." Yeah. But I was just addicted to the sales and everything. But um, yeah, man, I I, I haven't played Tears of the Kingdom yet. Uh, I do plan on getting it, but I kind of want to beat Breath of the Wild first and then get it. So maybe sometime in the fall, which is going to suck because a lot of games coming out in the fall. <laughs> that is true that is true and you know like uh it's interesting because like i'm you you haven't like really played breath of the wild and like i you know breath of the wild is more of a universally loved and acclaimed game it's one of a lot of people i think gq um recently had a like had a thing where they talked to um games journalists and it was like they all these games journalists like voted on their favorite games of all time. And I think it was universally wow. voted as the best game of all time by a lot of games journalists. But, you know, like, it's yeah. interesting. It's like, I played all of Breath of the Wild, didn't fall in love with it. Like, I really? I want to look... No, like, and, and you might relate to this a little bit more. Like, you might be a voice of reason here that, that <laughs> understands my chaotic mind. Because, like, you are also an Avatar fan, like Avatar The Last Airbender fan, right? Yes, yes. Love yeah. that show. So, okay. So, wh- so how would you describe the plot of, of Avatar The Last Airbender? Like, there's a kid who, who like, when the world needs him most, like, falls into a coma, right? Right. He wakes up 100 years later, and, and the world is completely different. There's a, uh, almost like an evil entity that's taken over everything that he held sacred. The whole world has changed, and the whole world is, like facing that entity am i right so far you're right all right well yeah for the most part because it was one part of the world i was like oh we're friends with them oh yeah that's true that's true yeah 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 Yeah. and then like then you also have um so the main character wakes up and the world is completely changed and then all of a sudden like that main character has to go to learn how to like he has to go and learn something from these masters in order to basically get be be powered up enough to like face this entity, right? Right, right. I think so, we're going with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So what I'm describing right now, like for the listeners here, is Breath of the Wild storyline. It's also the Avatar: The Last Airbender storyline. It is, you know, like so. 
Ooh, you you trying to make you trying to make people come for you. That's, yeah, that's it really is. <laughs> it really is. But like, it's crazy. So it's like you take out the bending. Still, you take out the, all the bending, and like, bre- like Breath of the Wild is almost Avatar: The Last Airbender. Like, it it's a very similar storyline. And as a story centric person, like I I want to play new stories out there. And I get like it's not quite apples to apples. They're not quite the same thing. Like Aang had like a. Aang actually had Katara and and um what's his, what's the boy's name um Sokka, yeah Sokka you had Sokka, me yeah. too and then Appa Appa yeah like but on that same note though like Link had to learn from all these same masters uh, of elements and such like that and then he got like one ability from each element Aang does the exact same thing where he goes to like all the four cor- like, yeah. you know, all the four corners and tries to learn how to be the best avatar and and he takes like aspects he takes like bending techniques from all of them and you know like it's right. it's a very similar story is what i'm getting at but like that's why i kind of didn't fall in love with breath of the wild and also like i'm not a person who i want some a little more direction in a game like give me more objectives like it's okay, a little too okay. much freedom for me is what i'm getting at okay so you're like a little bit more linear in a sense i you know the like, crazy- you like open world but it it's hey you need to go here Exactly. Like thing. Exactly. Like, um, like I, I like Sp- like Spider Man, like, um, like Spider Man oh, twenty eighteen yeah. and Miles Morales. It's an open world game, but like you got some direction to go in, and like you have a heartfelt story, and like you have a story that's like really deeply involved with the world that you're in. Versus like, right. and I'm not trying to throw shade on um, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom right now, but like. Yeah, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, right? It's just it's one of those things to where I I can acknowledge that I'm not falling in love with it. It might not just be the series for me, you know? Right. I mean, and that that's fair. There are some games that people love that, like like for example, I love love City Skyline. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are not gonna like City of Skyline. Oh, no. Same with with Zelda. Same with even Spider Man. I think Spider Man was wonderfully done. I mm-hmm. played both the. Uh, Miles Morales o- original and, yeah. and Miles Morales, right? And I I love the game. There's some people like, ah, that game is trash. It's like, how can you say the game is trash? Well, because they don't like the games. I, I understand it, but but you 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 maybe think of a very good thing here. So you're mm-hmm. saying we need to have a game that comes out and have Avatar as the open world game, it will get oh. 10 out of 10. That is true. That is basically that's basically <laughs> what I'm kind of getting at. Did it, so <laughs> that is basically. So if, if you're listening, Xbox, Sony, I don't know if it'll do well on Nintendo, but yeah, Nintendo and PC make an Avatar game or Nickelodeon. Maybe I need to talk directly to you guys. Make the Avatar game. We want it open world. We had one, wasn't that good? We need an open world Avatar game. It's time. Yeah, it's time. And, and legitimately, just copy Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you got to make you got it. <laughs> You know, like copy Breath of the Wild's kind of like gameplay direction and keep your main story and such like that. And I think you got it made. Yeah, that would actually be cool because I know same art style and from what I've seen, you can mend or combine weapons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Imagine doing that with Avatar with air bending and water and fire and earth. Oh my goodness! Oh so man, do. just take my money at this point. I love that. <laughs> just take my money, man. That'd be so dope. That'd be so dope. Well, like, this is an interesting conversation here. What, like, what are the IPs that you're into? Would you love to see be an open world video game? Ooh, um, that's a good question because most of the games I play are open world. So I'm trying yeah. to think back to the past. I mean, Spyro was kind of open world, but more linear. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Mario came out with open world. Yeah, I'm really thinking. Um, Bleach? I don't are you an anime people. person? I'm. I'm. You like light yes into it? Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I love anime, but I don't watch it enough. Okay, so I don't gotcha. like the like like. Uh, I'm still haven't seen all of My Hero Academia. I've never okay. seen all the Dragon Ball Z. I've seen most of it, but like I watched the last Dragon Ball movies. It's just I, I'm so behind on TV shows. Mm-hmm. Like I. Literally just caught up on Abbott Elementary, like watched it for the first oh, time. And it's finished. so good. Yeah. So like I'm I'm behind. So I don't want to say, yeah, I'm a super duper anime person. They'd be like, all right, so what you know about this person? Like, I don't know uh-huh. about them. 
So like I gotta catch up on my hero academia and there's another one. Um there's Demon like, Slayer, I'm guessing. See, I've never watched Demon Slayer. At I think all. you might like that one. I think you might like that one. Yes. Yeah, so, so so I mean some anime open world games would be cool. Like I, I think my hero academia is an open world game. That might be pretty dope. Yeah. Now, I don't know how you do it, but that might be pretty dope. I yeah. another one that I think might be like really cool to do is an open world. And th- this isn't like an anime. This is like I think there should be more open world comic book games. Like Ooh. think about it like this, like, okay, so PlayStation's got Spider-Man. They got they got the Ooh. Spider-Man like s- series on lock right now. Like yeah. they're doing it really big with that. Like PlayStation's got that and then you know, like Batman used to be like for every single console with the, with the Arkham games. Yeah. Imagine if Xbox, you know, because I want Xbox to do well. I I miss the days where Xbox, you know, were, were doing their thing when they when they felt like they were also like in the competition, so to speak. I miss those right. days. But I imagine if Xbox had like a solid like open world superhero game. It, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be Superman or anything like that. But what if they had like a Green Arrow game? That'd be they pretty dope. This close, because you know they were this close to buying WB Games. Yeah, they were this close, and we would have had that. But for those of you that don't know, I'm a diehard Xbox fan. So yeah, I'm oh, okay. I'm more Xbox fan than Nintendo and PlayStation. So uh, yeah. Oh, so this is your topic close. now. <laughs> this is your... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This yeah, this is definitely topic. my topic because I know I know a lot of people. Um, Lamb, Lam, I guess it's Lamb blasted. I think that's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. But they blasted uh, Redfall. Um, I haven't played it yet, but I watched it. Um, I see where some people had some issues with it, but I also think it's still not as bad as people are making it out to be. But that's the nature of the beast, so they say. But let, um, let I, me ask you then this: Then are you going to play Redfall? Yeah, I'm going to eventually play it. I'm uh, oh, I'm just behind. <laughs> 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 I'm so behind on game, and then they're like, "I'll play it next month." I'm like, "No, Final Fantasy 16 mm-hmm. comes out." I'm going to put all my time. I'm just letting you know right now. I'll, I'll probably jump on AEW Fight Forever just to try it out, but Final Fantasy 16, unless I can beat it in like seven days, which could mm-hmm. happen. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, Final Fantasy 16 is going to get all my time because that's that's just the game that I, I, uh, the series I've always loved. Um, but I do plan on playing Redfall. Uh, I just think sometimes Xbox doesn't get fair press. I know uh, a lot of people were saying that you no know, Xbox shouldn't buy Activision Blizzard because all they do is buy their studios. Then PlayStation announced they bought Bungie. Nobody said anything. Nobody complained about it. And I'm just sitting here like, same thing. Like I know it's not the same scale. No, so to no, speak. for sure not. For sure but not. It's, it's like PlayStation has to. I'm just gonna be completely honest. And Phil Fincher actually spoke on it too. He said PlayStation has to market a lot. We're never gonna be PlayStation. Oh, you're talking about like the, the way he was on the like kind of funny's X cast. Yes, yeah, her, yeah, that interview. It, yeah, and he, he he's right. They Xbox lost the worst generation, which was the digital. Because think about it, if I only had one console, let's say I didn't have Nintendo Switch, I didn't have a PS5, right? I only had one console, and PlayStation came out with a game, and I'm like. I want that game, but I have a thousand games on Xbox. I'm not switching over to PlayStation. Why would I switch to PlayStation to lose a thousand digital games that I own? Here's a here's the thing though. Like, I I think we live in an era now. It's just like where more than more, like for gamers, uh, like core gamers, they own more than one console. You know, like I do think I do think you're right. If you do own one console, that that you know, that case study is absolutely correct. Like, you're probably right. not going to spend your time, like, recycling or, like, getting rid of, like, a whole digital library just to join a new ecosystem. But right. on the other hand, I'm like, I think you can make a good case for being, and, and there's nothing wrong with being the second console in the house. You know what I mean? No. Like, it's like, I, I'm Nintendo re- loves it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm like, I'm gonna be real with you. There's some people who play the Nintendo Switch, but, like, there are probably a lot of people who did not play the Nintendo Switch very much until Tears of the Kingdom came out. Like, you know, like the, why you why you why you calling me out? You speaking a little too loud, man. I, I was actually <laughs> talking about me though. This is the crazy thing. The Look, crazy. I got my Switch right here. I don't even know if it's on. Thank I, you. I, I yeah, it's not even. Oh, it is on. 
I mm-hmm. have not. When was the last time I played? Oh, Pokemon. Um, Scarlet Remember and Violet. Pokemon came out. Uh, Violet. Yeah. 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 That was the last time I played this thing. Boy, that uh, thing ran like cold syrup at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, thing. That, that's the last time. Uh, yeah, Xenoblade came out before Pokemon Violet. So yeah, Pokemon Violet's the last time I played the Switch. It just been sitting on the and I have the OG Switch, not the OLED. I'm I'm the same OG with Switch. you. I'm not buying the I'm not buying the another Switch just because it's got better screen on it. Right, and, and just to sit in the dock forever. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like I'm I'm right there with you, man. You're preaching to the choir, but like <laughs> uh, you are like you spitting game right now. I'm like I'm not. Uh, like I have a Switch, like. If I don't get a review code for a game on my Switch, though, I'm not touching that thing. Like, because I'm like, much. yeah, it's like I. And it's it's all, sus. Yeah, it's and sus. It, it's 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 one of those <laughs> things to where like it's hard for me to want to play a game when that same game is available on a better platform. What I consider a better platform that has ray tracing, high and ray tracing SSD load times and everything like that, and then also. It's not in 1080p or 70 or 720. Like I can actually yeah. see something in 4K. You know, like yeah. it's it's just hard. It really is. I've you know, like I and the crazy thing is, like I would I'd be a Nintendo gamer again if you released another console. Like if you just give me another console to buy, because God knows I'm I'm like I just want to own every console for some reason. Like Super Smash Brothers in 4K. Oh man. You, you, I, I would have to buy the console. Have Super Smash to. Brothers in 4K. Uh, I, I remember what was it? Uh, a gamer by the name of uh, uh, King Gathalia. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's uh, mm-hmm. on Twitch and everything. He played. He 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 owns the game. So let me give the disclaimer. Yeah, first. For sure. he owns the game. He has the Switch. He bought um, Breath of the Wild, and he bought Tears of the Kingdom. But he's running it on an emulator on PC where it has the 4K to 60 frames per second, and it looks beautiful. And I'm like, just drop the console. You, Man, y'all have this? Sure. If the emulators can do it, I know the developers can do it. So just drop the console and look, have still have the basics. Let's say, hypothetically, this is $300, and then you drop the 4K version, which is $500. People will still buy it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. You're right on the money. Like, I, you know, like, I... I think you should just make you can do a Switch too, or maybe like maybe just do a Super Nintendo like like a Super Nintendo style to where like it's a console instead of it being like a portable kind of thing, but yeah. like the same game can run on the Switch like where you can have mm-hmm. your cake and eat it too. Like I yeah. would love to see that. I mean, Absolutely yeah. love to see that. See, then you're making me sad because they don't have it. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly, and I think that's that's crazy to me. But you know, like. And like we were talking about with Xbox, though, like, because this is a very interesting conversation. Like, Xbox is in a position right now to where, like, it, you know, I don't want to be too hard on them because, like, everybody goes through, like, their troubled, their troubled times. Like, everyone has their highs, everyone has their lows. But, like, PS3. this feel, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I'm like, the PS3 had this lows until it didn't, you know, like, until, like, The Last of Us at the very end of the generation came out. Right, and, right. like, everybody was just like, oh, they got the games now like but mm-hmm. but let's be honest though like it's been a really rough time being an xbox gamer because i i too have like i have a series s and a series x like i got I've, every I, console like every every yeah, exactly <laughs> i got you know like you know like well like when you were talking like you sent me a message like before we started where you were like i'm coming down from downstairs like I have a game room upstairs and a game like and like I have also a console in the living room. It's just like one of those things to where like I'm an Xbox gamer. I'm in part of this ecosystem too. It's just like I just wish that we'd do better. Like yes. <laughs> like just do a I little better. Yeah. Yeah. And I would I'm also like I'm also looking at like everything that Xbox is doing right now with its like with the first party lineup. And I, I think they're killing it with racing games, but everything that's not racing has been Eh, yeah, you know, yeah. So I, I, and I don't want to attack anyone. Okay, yeah, I want to make this sure. clear. But it all started with Don Matrick. Oh, really? Don Matrick, which if you say that word, sometimes it's like a cuss word to Xbox fans. Because mm-hmm. Don Matrick is the guy that basically screwed up the Xbox One. Uh, when the um, 
that was when they wanted to, they said, we want to make it an entertainment system mm -hmm. and we want to have this and this, which I got the vision, but the way it was executed, they ignored games. Yeah. And that's what killed them. Like they, uh, and that spot still doesn't do this to this day. They still don't try to secure exclusive first party games. Like, like PlayStation does like PlayStation, literally final fantasy 16 only coming out on PlayStation. Like not even PC, which I was hoping it would come to PC, not even come to PC. Xbox doesn't do that for whatever reason, or they don't do it as much as PlayStation. No, no. And Dumb Metric is one of the people that kind of sort of made Xbox Xbox hit his law. He closed game studios. He 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 did a lot. So Phil Spencer is now building back up what Xbox used to have. So now they have, uh, obviously they have Bethesda, well, I should say Zenimax, because that's Bethesda and a bunch of other companies. Mm -hmm. uh, they're now about to get Activision, Blizzard, and King, and all that. So they are getting back to that point where they have all these developers. And uh, Phil Spencer said it on the podcast as well. They're getting back to the point where they're releasing a AAA game every quarter. But I also think what hurts, I, I don't think it hurts Xbox, because I like the fact they do this. But they're not also just focused on one genre of games. Like PlayStation, you know you're going to get great story games. I love it. But <laughs> for the most part, like, like that's their bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Xbox is like, no, you may get a racing game here. You may get an RPG game. You may get this story game. You may get this platformer. Or you may get this fighting game. Like, they are they never niche down, so to speak. And I think um, the industry has kind of gone more towards story games than it used to be because it used to be like I think the industry used to be ran by fighting games everybody used to have Street Fighter Mortal Kombat Soul Calibur uh, Tekken yeah Soul Calibur which I beat my wife in by the way she <laughs> like, I like that part but but like that's the games we used to have but now now it's kind of like story games are the bread and butter and that's where Xbox is coming up short uh, even though I think Gears of War was fantastic and Halo uh, was fantastic as well. They don't have a lot of those story games, but I think hopefully within the next few years, we get the new Fable and it, it has that cinematic story game like you expect from PlayStation and things like that. So it, it, it has been rough, but I do have faith that they'll turn around. I mean, you have... I don't know how many studios they have now, but like too many to be putting out, like, out <laughs> like they putting out games like this, like right. And that's the other part. Like people, if they they expected the studios to be bought and games come out the next year. Well, games no. take like three, four years to come out. This is about the time that the games should be coming out from these studios. And they even came out with a uh, study that said games take ten years, a billion dollars to make. And I'm like, wait, what? So, it, like, that's why we haven't seen a GTA 6 yet, which, honestly, let's be honest, they're just milking GTA 5. Yeah, but that was, that was exactly <laughs> what I was thinking, too. I was just like, they're just going to milk that until the cow comes home. The cow is going to die before crazy. they put that out. GTA 5 came out on PS3, Xbox 360, Was Xbox it 2013? One. Yeah, it came out uh -huh. from the PS3 generation and Xbox One generation. It, it's been past time for a new GTA. Oh, for sure. But... But yeah, I, I think Xbox is going to turn it around. And uh, the the good thing about being able to own all the all the consoles, let's say hypothetically, they never turn it around ever. I don't believe that. So Phil Spencer, if you're listening, I don't believe that. I'm just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but if they never, ever, ever turn it around, I still own a PlayStation Five. I still have a PC, and I own a Switch. So I I've been I've been one of the blessed ones to be able to own every console because I know there's families out there that wish they could yeah. give their kids every console, but unfortunately you can't. Don't feel bad about that, by the way. Uh, if you're looking for a switch, go to a pawn shop. Yeah, Let's or do. Facebook Marketplace is a good place as well. Like people are always yeah. selling, always selling used consoles on that thing. So I'm like, yeah, like you don't necessarily have to buy new in order to get like good experiences in gaming nowadays. For for sure, for sure, like. I, right. I do want to touch on something you, you said, because, like, for one, um, whenever you, this episode does drop, you're going to have to show your wife this so she knows she's that she's been publicly called out for losing it <laughs> in Soul Calibur. I, I'll put it on her computer, but put it on mute. It's fine. It's okay, fine. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. So um, the thing I want to, to broach on, though, is, like, you know, it's crazy because, like, in, in the Xbox 360 era, I would probably say that was the generation of shooters like that was 
almost the genre that really helped Xbox really take over and almost like dominate the first half, at least that first, like, I'd probably say the majority of that generation was because like of the like 90% of it. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way they approached the shooter landscape. They, they, you know, like they had everything on lock with like Gears of War, Halo, Call of Duty and everything. And Borderlands, you know, like I, it's crazy because I, when I think of Borderlands, like OG Borderlands, I think of Xbox first. And I know that might not be a real thing, but that's kind of the way I associate that, that generation of, of video games. Right. But, but, you know, like, so this then we we moved with the Fortnites and the apexes we still stay strong with like the shooter landscape but it's like now you kind of mentioned like the single player narrative based games and that's sony's bag and butter like it it's crazy that like that is what they're known for but like you i don't know if you heard the news but like sony's pivoting to for a lot of their studios to go like with um, the games as a service model, and that's why they bought Bungie to help with their multiplayer landscape. Do right. you think that's a good idea, or do you feel like, hey, if you're winning a generation, stay with what you know and continue that momentum? Like, do you rebuild in sports? You don't rebuild a franchise while you're still winning championships, you know? <laughs> right. I, I I think, and this is this is the other part that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to uh sony mm -hmm. um sony's money maker if i'm not mistaken i could be slightly wrong but it's playstation that's their money yeah. maker they, they they're not winning the tv market they're not win they're starting to win the camera market yeah so i don't know if it makes them enough money because a lot of people still get uh nikon canon and uh panasonic and all those all those other uh brands right so PlayStation is kind of their money maker. So they're looking at it like, okay, yeah, y'all made us this much money. Yeah, we're number one because you got to also remember they sell each console at a loss as mm -hmm. well. So they're looking at it like, okay, yeah, we've been killing it with story games, but we need to get some more of these microtransactions. Like, to be <laughs> honest, every company wants micro. Even if you you if you right now, I guarantee you, if you could sell a microtransaction. For like a dollar and a million people buy it, you do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hate like, microtransactions, but you're on point there. I probably get my million real quick. Right. And so so they're looking at like like, okay, we need to pump more money into Sony right now. Cause uh I think probably probably PlayStation and the movie division because of Spider-Man. Those yeah. are their two money makers. I forgot about Spider-Man, the movie division. So other than that, they really don't make money off anything else that they're looking like, okay, we got to get more money, but is it a smart idea? There's, they have to teeter totter a certain line. And there's a fine line to where it's like, okay, we see you trying to expand the revenue. Yeah. We'll support that too. Okay. You just trying to jip us out of a lot of money. Yeah. Cause that's what happened with a lot of these free to play games. They come out, people are like, Oh my God, this game is so amazing. Then 10 hours later, they're like, yeah, don't play this game. Cause all it is, it's a microtransaction. It's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? When they looking for whales where people spend a bunch of money on that one game. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. I, I can't remember the technical term off the top of my head, but I get what you're saying though. It's almost like right. the, was it the gotcha machine, so to speak, where like people just yeah. dump in like a hundred thousand dollars into FIFA or, or NBA 2K every oh year, you know? Don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I hate and it, it's nothing against, I get why they do it because it makes them a bunch of money. Yeah. But I hate the my teams and NBA, FIFA, NHL, all of them. Oh, yeah. I, even, even WWE 2K is now doing it. And I'm like, I no, I'm good. I don't want none of that. And then they try to push it on you. It's like, yo, you. ever since I got the game, you know, only play the, the universe mode or only mm -hmm. play the uh, my NBA. You, you know what I'm playing. Yeah. Why do you keep pushing to my team on me? I'm I'm not playing that. I I refuse to put money into it because, like even even what you what I'll never forget NBA 2K something. It was like uh, let's say 18, probably mm -hmm. 18. I bought all that those uh, VC for the uh, my park yeah player and all that. I said, all right, cool. It's it's fine. I at least get half of that for the next the next one, right? Nope. Head start all the way over, and I said I'll never play my park. I've never touched my park ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I put I put like a good two three hundred dollars on this. I paid Whoa. sixty five, mm -hmm. then paid two hundred three hundred dollars for the my part because I just wanted my players just to be good or whatever. Yeah, 
Um, cause I didn't have, at that time I didn't have, I wasn't a content creator. I didn't have the time to grind up to a 99 and all that. Mm-hmm. And when I lost it, lost it all for the next, uh, game, I was just like, you know what? Never again. I have not, if I don't do my team, my player, or, uh, yeah, my player or even, uh, my part, I, no. I'm no, good. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like I, I play like a lot of those sports centric games and I jump on to like the create where you man- manage your franchise mode. Uh, like I jump whatever the whatever term you want to call that because different games have different terms for it. I jump into right. that mode and then I jump into the exhibition and then like on certain games, I will play like the single player like campaign or story mode, depending on um, what game it is like WWE My Rise, where you're you're playing as like the male male side of the f- things or a female right. and you have like you have the e- exact story that you're playing out. I'll play that. Uh, but like right. like you're saying with M- like with like dub- like um NBA, I'm not going to dump money into that sort of thing because I'm like you're making it an MMO where I have to pay like. A stupid amount of money to be able to be good at that game, right? Right, and then there's people like just grind it up, bro. And I'm like, nah. y'all got time, yeah, <laughs> okay. for sure, for sure. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people that say grind, they're actually just paying for it, but yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. And then by the time like I get to a point where I'm decent at the game and grind it up and such like that, the next game is out, you know, <laughs> like right, the next game is out. That's crazy to me, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous at this point. But it it it's like I get it, but and that that's where you have to teeter totter that line because I don't know if you know this NBA two K twenty three has done horrible, like it, financially. It, not uh well, like as far as people still playing it, still talking about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like like, like when you yeah. go to Twitch, I li- I went to Twitch and looked it up one time. But it didn't even have a thousand viewers one time. I was like, wow, two K like. NBA 2K? Like, it, it was weird, man, but that's because people are fed up with the microtransaction. They're fed up with the changes to my part, making it harder. Like, and yeah. I get that they they want people to keep playing the game, but it's also, you have to stay on that fine line. So I think PlayStation doing more live service game isn't bad, mm-hmm. but you do have to stay on that fine line of, okay, you don't want to go too, too far into that. We're just trying to make money territory, which I'm I'm hoping that's not where where Jim Ryan is planning to go. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> you know, you know, I I hope it's not as well because like I, you know, like you said, like you're primarily an Xbox gamer. I'm primarily like I've leaned back and forth between my Xbox and my PlayStation. But like I, I if I'm being honest, like I look forward to my PlayStation big blockbuster games a lot more than any other game in the world. Like. If PlayStation and as of this recording, I think they're doing like a PlayStation showcase next week. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like if they come out and they basically say, like, hey, we are, we're going to drop bombs on y'all. We're dropping like, hey, we got Spider Man coming out this this year. We're dropping Ghost of Tsushima 2. We're dro- we are now announcing Horizon Forbidden West, uh, Horizon 3. We're announcing like Bloodborne Remastered or Bloodborne Remake. Like, uh, that's going to be enough to where I'm like, okay, like y'all did the thing, <laughs> like y'all did the damn thing, right. y'all, y'all, y'all got this generation in the bag as far as I'm concerned. And then like, right. and that's not even including like whatever, whatever like Blue Point Studios is working on. That's not including whatever. Wolverine. Naughty... Yeah, exactly. What if I'm naughty... so mad? Wolverine is only going to be on PlayStation. Like... Oh, I bet. I bet <sighs> Xbox gamers are sick. <laughs> sick. I'm talking about. And, and my my thing. I wish. I get that it's a PlayStation game. I, I totally get it. I just wish they would also drop it on PC at the same time. I think that's that way, a, lot of people's, a lot of people's goal there. Yeah, they, like, they, I get it. Like, you don't want to drop it on Xbox. Okay, totally fine. I get it. That's understandable. I, I 100% agree with you. Every console needs their exclusive. Like, you'll never see Super Mario on Xbox. Like, it's no. just not going to happen. But can we get it on PC? <laughs> 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 like, I like, I like Wolverine with the mods. Oh my goodness, that would be insane! But I may have to wait like a year for it to happen. So now, like the crazy thing is, I think like um they they posted a news story. What was it? Day before yesterday, where like they said it's going to be a two two to three year window for PC games to come, like for them to port over a PC release of a game. And I'm like, that is insane, right? That's so... two to three years. That's very silly. 
Yeah. Um, minimum? Like, that's not even like, hey, like, you know it's coming. That's like, hey, two to three years, and we might make it happen, you know? And then by that time, you'll be too far behind to even play the new the, the game. So, like, let's say Wolverine comes out this year, and it drops on PC 2026. Wolverine 2 will be out by then. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Then they I call it they call it Wolverine Remastered. That's right. Yeah, I think that's kind of what the the goal is for them. Is like they use the PC port almost like a additional commercial, so to speak, or like, hey, like yeah. this is why you should get on our new console. This is because like you'll get it on PC eventually, but like we want to remind you that you know, like if you want the newer experience to go, come on, drop a P, drop all that money mm. on the PS Five, you know. I feel like they're missing out on a very big money market doing that. Um, they probably are. They probably are. But, they, you know, like, the crazy thing is, is, like, it, they're missing out on a money market, but they're probably keeping the whatever IP is, in, like, in the conversation if they do it well. Like, it's yeah. like, you remember The Last of Us came out, like, a while back ago, like, for PC, and it was just, like, a horrible port. Right. <laughs> it was. It was like it really was. I heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. People were very much up in arms about like how dirty that port was. It's so that to me is like I get I kind of understand it from a marketing perspective of like you keep whatever like IP it is, you keep that like on people's lips. Like you keep it in people's thoughts. And then when right. you have a show, when you have a movie, when you have like additional side like additional game, like you can just pop that in and it's almost like a commercial for it. I I understand that from a marketing perspective. From a gamer's right, perspective right. though, like I I'm not even a PC gamer like that. Y'all get done dirty on the PC side of things <laughs> by PlayStation. That, and I think that's kind of why Xbox Xbox to me has the better strategy long term. Because mm -hmm. they're like, look, yeah, we're not gonna beat PlayStation in the console market, but we're gonna beat them in the other markets. Which they literally game pass, uh, PC game pass is killing it. Um, they're adding a bunch of uh, games to it. Like I like the fact that Starfield's coming out on Xbox and PC. Yeah. And Redfall came out on Xbox and PC. Because remember, it used to be just, yeah, Starfield's on Xbox. Not going to worry about PC. PC games like, well, that sucks. We want to play it. Why we got to get it? So I like the fact that they're even, uh, I think they're going to bring uh, game pass to the Switch. That seemed to be in the work that's how they're going to get Activision to run on. Uh, I can see it. Yeah. Call of Duty going on a Switch. So, if they I don't can know do... how they're going to manage to put Call of, a game as big as Call of Duty on a Switch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, that cloud game is going to have to kick in for real. <laughs> it really is. Cause I was like, you know, like Call of Duty games keep getting bigger and bigger. Like, I think the latest one was like, what, almost 150 gigs? Yeah, it's uh 153 because I just looked at it the other day because I had to clear up some space. That's insane, it's be ain't it? it? It's better than the other one because the other one was 200, 300 gigs. That's the insane. one right before it. And I'm yeah. like, mm -mm. and then you yeah. also have like games like you know, Star Wars recently was a meaty like 150, 160 gigs. Like, yeah, that like, you know, like I, I, yeah, I, I, you know, like I like Switch, but not enough to want to like. Now, I don't want a dumbed yeah. down version of a game or and, and if it's a cloud version at that point, like why would you just like you can play it on Steam Deck at that point? Like you can play it on a cloud oh, device. Yeah, it's you know? More powerful uh yeah. device, yeah. Yeah, you know? even, even look, I'm not I hate to say this, but sometimes even the phone is more powerful, it's powerful than your switch, yeah. And I'm like <laughs> and that that's where Nintendo and uh, it, it it drives me crazy because it's like Nintendo. You had the bag. You mm -hmm. were number one. You you were you were crushing everybody, and you decided because you wanted to keep the console family friendly, like like, and, and that's what made me mad. They're like, yeah, we don't trust y'all to make the right decisions, so we're gonna keep it family friendly. And of course, they kind of abandoned that now. Yeah. But I remember they was like, yeah, we don't want any shooting games on our console. We don't want any of that. I'm like, why not? I'm like, telling you. I mean, yeah. and obviously you broke your own rule. You eventually put Splatoon on the console, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you don't want any shooting games unless it's your shooting game, you know? Right. They're talking yeah. about uh, some games were too gory and all that. I'm like, I yeah, get it. Right. Video game, come on, but... man. Yeah, it's a video game. Come on, man. But yeah. 
you know, so I want to ask you, like, what are you playing right now? What am I playing right now? Uh, Star Wars, Jedi Survivor, okay, Minecraft, uh, Apex Legends, and uh, that's probably it. I, like I said, I may get that Diablo 3. Um, I may get it today and play it. Uh, I'm not sure because I know Street Fighter 6 beta is out. I'm like, I need to at least play it. I like, have some opinion on it. You know, people are going to ask about it. But um, yeah, those are basically my main games right now. Uh, that it sounds fun. Out. That sounds fun. I'm, I'm, um, you know, Star Wars Jedi Survivors one. I'm, I'm a chicken as a as a person. Like I do not like horror centric things, but I'm finally I, like, somebody somebody yeah. with me. <laughs> no, <laughs> my community says you need to play like Layers of Fear and no. all those. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, I'm, I'm a, this, man. Exactly. I don't, we don't we don't vibe with that. Like like let's be honest. <laughs> We don't vibe with that. I don't even watch horror movies. If I'm being rude with you, man, like I'm really? I'm a chicken like that. Okay, see, now I don't watch a horror movie. Like I just watched Nope for the first time last night. Do we and count like, like Jordan Peele movies as horror movies? though? the kind of psychological are, right? horror. Yeah. Okay, because it's like it's it's to the point where you're like, yo, this could really happen in real life. Yeah, like a yeah. nope could happen in real life for real, for real. And you, you're like, how do you deal with it? <laughs> you like, for real, or like you know, like a get out situation or, or stuff like that. Like oh, I, man. Jordan Peele movies, I can watch, but I almost, I almost don't consider them horror movies. It's like gotcha, maybe gotcha. that's how I rationalize it in my head at least. But like, I'm so like, you can watch like Jason or Freddy. Nah, nah, I'm out there. I'm out there. Okay, <laughs> see, I'm not. I'm not that. I could watch that. I could watch that. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You're, You're braver than me. For the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> You're braver than me then. But like, the reason I brought this up is because like I like I like being a part of the game of the year discussion. Like I want to make sure that I play all the hottest games that are probably going at the end of the year going to be in the game of the year conversation. And um, Resident Re Four is like. A lot of people are talking about that game, and a lot of people are talking about like it, like hey, like it's not Tears of the Kingdom right now is probably like number one as far as like the game of the year right now. But like uh, before Tears of the Kingdom, a lot of people were talking about RE4, and I'm like, okay, I need to check out this chosen one and see if it's really hot, you know? Like, but I'm again a chicken, so I'm like, how do I exactly? I don't know how to go about doing this, so I'm think I think I'm gonna play RE4 a little bit, see see how scary it is. If it really is the <laughs> the fear factor situation gets a little intense, I'm probably gonna drop off. But I'm gonna try that out. It's it's, it's intense, man. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, it's it there. It's it's not as bad. It's not as bad as like layers of fear or okay. uh, the evil within and things like that. They have a lot of jump scares though. They do okay. like like uh like I, like I said I'll troll people like I normally make gifs of gamers so like if mm -hmm. they do a jump scare like ah they do that I'll like make a gif of it and yeah Resident Evil Four gave me some wonderful gifs they they still mad at me about it but it's fine it's fine I bet. But <laughs> you may have some nightmares because there's there's one part early on in the game where yeah it's it 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 gets you yeah it, it gets you because it got me so. But I'm I'm like I'm also like chicken to the point where I don't even play like Dead by Daylight. I don't know if you No, 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 I'm not playing that. Yeah. Nah, it, playing it, that. It, and it's not like the game scary, it's just being chased by the killer freaks me out. Like so Nah, I'm not I'm not about that life. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm not about that life. In in life, you gotta know who you are as a person. And I just That's know true. I'm a chicken, like courage the cowardly <laughs> dog kind of chicken. And I'm not gonna be able to do that one, but I want to add, you know, curious, man. Not <laughs> curious. You, can't, you can't be curious, man. Like, courage, courage is gonna everybody, everything, everything. Courage, Mario. Is... yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh. Shout out to Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's so funny. Um, so I want to ask you a question. Like, okay, so you know, being an Xbox gamer has been a little ups and downs here and there, but like. What has been your favorite Xbox experience over the last couple of years? Like, <laughs> this doesn't necessarily have to be the, the first party games, but what has been yeah. your favorite undisputed Xbox game that you played in the last couple of years? Um, so it had, it had to be a game or just just complete experience. I I'm what I was leaning towards game, but I'm curious if you have an experience outside of gaming that is okay. qualify. 
Um, let's see, Xbox game will probably be State of Decay 2. Oh. Um, because I did get a chance to play with my homie, and it, it you know, it was one of the it was when I started my era, so to speak, or I ended my era of not defeating games. Okay. Like I would start playing games and then I wouldn't defeat them. Like I would never beat them. So I kind of get like even Final Fantasy 15, it took me I got to the last part of Final Fantasy 15, but because mm-hmm. I knew what was going to happen at the end, I waited almost a <laughs> year to beat it. And they, and they, my friends were just, my homies were just getting on me like, man, you need to beat the game. I'm like, nah, bro, I ain't beating the game. I know what happened. I don't like what happened. So, but uh, State of K two definitely helped me start beating games. I was like, okay, you know what? You pay all this money for the game, it's going to beat them. You know? Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And, uh, Outside of gaming, one of the and I have this like I'm looking at it right now. It's printed on my wall. Uh, when was that? That was 2022. Uh, Aaron Greenberg, who's uh-huh. with Xbox, uh, he actually followed me on Twitter. What? And, That's so dope. I, yeah, yeah, man. And, and he he was uh he was following uh black content creators for Black History Month. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of people do that as performative stuff, or whatever. Yeah. Right? yeah, we're gonna follow you. Show the black people some love. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And but he actually likes he interacts with some of my tweets. He even retweets some of my tweets. And um, I was going to Pat's West um, last year. Yeah, uh-huh. last year going to Pat's West, and I said, "Hmm, it's in Seattle. Microsoft is in Seattle. I wonder if I could reach out to him." And I said, "Nah, I ain't gonna do it." And uh, my friends like, "Look, just go on and do it." Shoot if he says shot, no, man. just no. Yeah. yeah. So I reached out to him. And uh, uh, a week goes by, he didn't respond. I'm like, okay, so it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, right after I said that, he responded. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And, and he, he, was, he was like, yeah, man, I love, I love to, you know, link up with you. Um, let me see what we can do to make it happen. I got to tour the Halo Museum. Oh, and, that's so uh, cool. Got to, got to meet Aaron Greenberg, actually mm-hmm. have a real conversation with him. And um, then uh, he was so nice. That he took us to the Microsoft campus. Oh, that's well. amazing. Yeah. So we, we're walking the Microsoft campus and we're seeing uh, the Microsoft Museum where they should have the first ever PC built and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, or Microsoft PC, that is. And um, yeah, so that 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 was literally my greatest Xbox experience over the past few years. Because uh, State of the K2 is the main thing that comes to mind. Uh, just new chance to beat that. They even. I could say Gears 5 and all that, but I just remember having that multiplayer experience with State of the K2. Uh, my homie, he's a diehard zombie fan, so he, he comes in, well, you need to beat him, man. I hope you beat it. I hope you beat it. So we finally beat it. So, um, yeah, those those would be the main two things that come to mind when it comes to uh, Xbox. Like, it, it was a lot of fun walking to Microsoft campus, having a conversation with Aaron Greenberg and and things like that. I actually need to reach out to him about something else, but I've been kind of chicken, like chicken <laughs> like you right now. Curse the cow or the dog chicken? <laughs> yeah, very, probably worse than Curse the cow, the dog. He at least saved people. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but yeah, those, that, that would be my, um, those two would be my favorite Xbox experiences that I can think of off the top of my head. That's some dope ones. There's some really cool ones. Um, you know, like, I, I know we're running a little low on time, but before we go, I got a couple of questions to ask you. And the main question is, are you ready? Because it is time for our portion of the show called the Pro Nerd Review portion. And, you know, I should have prepped you on this. I should have gave you some, some prep <laughs> time on this. But Uh-oh. I decided I wanted to go in a little fresh because I wanted to see your reaction here. So okay. here's how this works. The Pro Nerd Trivia portion of the show is base goes as follows. We have five questions that we like to ask our esteemed guests and mm. if all if the guest gets all five questions correct he goes into our pro nerd hall of fame so Ooh. yeah so no multiple choice <laughs> no lifelines this isn't who wants to be a millionaire but like you get five questions based on five different areas of nerdy expertise right now i've entered you know like this is you know like we're getting close to 175 episodes we've had several like lots of guests on this show let's just put it like that Mm -hmm. but you know we've only had one person in the hall of fame but i have something about to stay one no (laughs) 
the we, crazy we, we thing, gonna see. We gonna see. The crazy thing is, it's like I believe in you. I think we're gonna hit. You're gonna be the two. Uh, so you're gonna be the second one. Here we go. Let's make it happen, Cap. All right. So on our, f I have right here on my screen over here the wheel of destiny. Whatever, whatever the wheel lands on is our category for that, for this oh, particular God. episode. So here we go. The wheel. Pick all the hard ones. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, uh, you know, it's whatever the wheel lands on. The wheel has landed on Batman. Batman okay. trivia. So yeah, I feel I feel good about this. All right, so <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I love how you melt. I don't. <laughs> all right, so all right. How many times has the actor George Clooney played Batman? No, at least once. Let me think. I, I want to say once. I don't remember him playing. I don't know, like, are you talking about video games too? No, I don't think he played video games. The Batman was like the dead pass away. RP to him. Um, I feel like once, but I'm I'm uh, I'm leaving between one or two. I I don't know which one. Okay. Uh, he missed the first question, man. Can I Google? Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to say once. I'm going to say once. Okay. That answer is correct. He only oh, played. Snip. Yeah. He only yes. played Batman one time, and that was in the movie Batman and Robin in 1997. That's why he played it once. Batman yeah. and Robin was not good. <laughs> that was not good at all. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, but. Did you, you really? Know. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed all the Batman movies. Every single one that came out from Batman 1, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember what year it came out, but all the way to, what was the last one? Batman the Batman with, with um, Robert Pattinson. Oh, I haven't seen that one. I watched that oh, today. Yeah, I haven't on, seen that one. If you got HBO Max, it's on there right now. I, I, I own it. We're not going to talk about it. But Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Here is my next question. The next question has landed on pro wrestling. Okay, okay. Pro I feel a little confident on this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pro wrestling. That's, a, that's All right. a very wide topic. Okay. It is very wide. I mean, yeah, that is. All right. Got me Let's... nervous, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There is a wrestler by the name of Charles White. Charles Wright. Um,. He happened to play characters known as Papa Shunga of uh, Papa Shunga. And he's also played different characters throughout the years. One character he one character he played in the 1990s in the Attitude Era was different than Papa Shunga. What was the name of that character? Oh the yeah! Godfather. <laughs> the Godfather. The Godfather. That one. Oh train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, if I start yeah. doing this, I do that one. Yeah, okay. you do that one. Yeah, I like that. Ooh. I like that one. So you two for and two. you stop right there, you would have got me because you said Charles White. Uh -huh. And I automatically thought Big Show, but it's Paul, Paul White. White. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You would have yeah. got me, but you kept going. I'm like, okay. Yeah. okay. I, I'm glad the, the question helped you out there. So, <laughs> All right. So our next category is in the realm of the MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. Okay. Right. Know a little bit. Okay. Know a little bit. I like that. I like that. All right. Which MCU character makes their makes their MCU debut in Thor Ragnarok, as you know, played by Tessa Thompson? Um. What Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Played by. T oh, I don't know her name. Um. She rides the horse. She does ride a horse. <laughs> she does ride a horse. I don't, I want to say her name is Valkyrie, but I'm not sure. Valkyrie I, is she, the correct answer. Oh, so yeah, Valkyrie is the correct answer. <laughs> Let's go. That, that was a guess. <laughs> that really was. That was a deep pool, and I like that. I like that. I was, right, so, I was gonna say you with the one the the one that came in with the head wrap and I was like no 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 she's actually the good person so you yeah, think yeah. Hella at first yeah yeah and uh -huh. I was like no she did that's not her yeah yeah who okay right. okay oh got three it's so you I'm get like, three I'm a nerd I'm a yeah you doing it you doing it <laughs> all right so, let me stop because we got two more <laughs> no 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 you're doing good you're doing good all right so 
the next category has landed on Harry Potter. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. In book four, aka, aka, book four, movie four, which two teams competed for the Quidditch World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest. I don't know the team name. I know Harry Potter was on one, and um, Draco Malfoy was on the other one. I do not know the team name. That one you got me on. The crazy thing is, like the World Cup, you like the World Cup is at the beginning. Uh, okay, so at the beginning of the movie, um, like there were there were two, like Harry and um, the Weasleys. You know, the Weasleys get invited to the World Cup, and mm -hmm. they go on a like they go on an excursion. They stay in a little tent, and they're going to see like uh, like the World Cup being played that next day. Well, on the World right. Cup, there's a character named Victor Crumb. He was the seeker on one team and then like on the other team it was like they're another national team victor crumb would later go on into the triwizard tournament and he'd be competing against harry in the triwizard tournament but harry and draco weren't on the the world cup teams like those were the house teams like the house teams were oh, actually good to hogwarts you, oh yeah you, you. yeah it's a deep cut it is a deep cut so the answer is bulgaria and ireland were like the two teams that played in the world cup during that time frame yeah that was, <laughs> it, it, it is a deep cut you, you, I, you said harry potter I'm like okay you know i watched all the harry potters i'm good uh -huh. you said quit it so i was like nope nope Lock. i'm out <laughs> i'm out all right so all right. i got the four i got i got i got I, I still want to do five i want to see if i can get four out of five yeah let's yeah yeah can, yeah we're, we're continuing to go we're, we're continuing to go let's see oh, all right goodness. here we go the next category is in the realm of nintendo okay all right what was the name of the console video game console in between the wii and the nintendo switch oh the one that everybody was mad about the wii u yep that's the correct <laughs> answer <laughs> that is the correct answer yeah so you could have gave me an easy harry potter course and i would have had five but nah, yeah you know, <laughs> yeah crazy, my, you know the my crazy... friend is still mad about the wii u because the breath of the wild was supposed to come to the wii u oh it does it, to... it is on the wii u so it is okay but <laughs> it was it, maybe not breath of the wild. it was another game and they never put it on the wii u but they put it on the switch he, was, he still holds a grudge against mm -hmm. nintendo today but yeah yeah wii u yeah the wii u so you got four out of five how do you feel yeah you, you did you did really good it's Harry... the quidditch question like i i that's the one thing that's my true weakness in harry potter is quit quit it i don't yeah the crazy thing is it's like okay so like then like when i spin the wheel the wheel lands on a certain topic and then it gives you like it spins again within that certain topic and then like it, and it has like two questions that that it's sort of like you know how like in a pie it spins it lands on a certain question within that topic so like right. the, the like when it landed it was on a hairline thread in between two topics you know like and so like un, in between two questions so your other question in harry potter was like could have been very different i don't necessarily know if, if this would have helped or not but like um if you would have got this but because this one to me is a deep cut as well but like the other one was like what is the spell that helps ward off a dementor um, the spell Aramis? That's the only one I can think of. Uh, something like that. Spell <laughs> Expel uh, is the dis yeah, disarming spell. Yeah. Oh, this one. So that, this that one would have been the Patronus um, charm. Patronus. Yeah. Yeah. Like so I would have missed that either way. Yeah, yeah. Like when he yells "Expecto Patronin" and like that, the stag comes out of out of his wand and such like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I will. Harry freaking Potter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta, I gotta say it like like the like the uh like uh what what mouth was it? Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. <laughs> yeah, which was spite in his name. <laughs> so DDS, you did really good. Um it was it was you did really good. Before we go though, I have one last question for you, and that's where can the good people find you? Oh uh, man, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, uh YouTube. Uh, MySpace, Black Planet, Black People Meet, <laughs> Cupid. I'm, I'm just playing. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I have a website, uh, dds618.com. It has the links to all my social media, you know, Twitter, Twitch, and all that. Um, so, yeah, you can find me on there. I'm also a G Fuel ambassador, and I also have a uh, a new 
G Fuel that just came out. That what? Hibiscus tea oh. that dropped last week. So I gotta uh, I haven't opened it yet. So I gotta I'm doing a video today where I open it, taste it. But yeah, you can find me uh, all over there, all over those places. Um uh, I live stream on Twitch normally Monday through Fridays, but I'm still Fridays is kind of like eh. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, I may take some Fridays off, but definitely Monday through Thursdays. Excuse me, I'm trying to post a YouTube video at least once a week. So all yeah, right, that's where you can find me. Yeah. All right. Everyone, the links to the links to find him will be in the description of this episode. DDS, it was very nice having you. This has been a very fun conversation. I've really enjoyed having <laughs> you on the show today. Yeah, yeah. This has been a great conversation to the the freaking Harry Potter question. <laughs> 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 I was good. I, I was like, I'm like, I may get into this thing. But see, yeah. that's what happened. I started bragging the will tonight, right, but it's cool. It's cool. Now it's all it's all good. Next time you're gonna come strong. Like, yeah, like yeah. yeah, so like so for your information though, like on the Wheel of Destiny, you had like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, um, like James Bond, wrestling, um, Marvel, MCU, Batman, um, Star Trek, Star Wars, like the it's a deep, deep dive into nerdy category. Okay. It actually gave me all the favorable questions. You had yeah. Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Star Trek, Star Wars. Yeah, I've been like, all right, whatever. Yeah, Star that, Wars, that, yeah. That's why people don't get the five. It's because like yeah. there's some holes in that dirty game, you know? Right. Yeah. I had to keep me on Harry Potter though. That's crazy. But it, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, like there are also categories on there. So it, it dives yeah. deep into nerdy categories. But yeah, you did yeah, really good. Sense. You did really and good. Four out of five, I, I can't be mad at it. I can't be mad at it. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. So before we go, um, it's been great having you on the show. We'd love to have you back. We've, we've told people where you can find you. The only thing I'm going to ask from you now is this is a this is a podcast about video game recommendations. So what is the video game recommendation that you're going to give to people today? What's uh, one game you game... think people... Yeah, what, what's a game you think people should definitely check out? Um, I do... I, I, I want to show love to the indie games. I don't think indie games get enough love. One game that's about to come out. Um, I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, I know it's coming out soon. I can't remember the date, but it's called Alterium Shift. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw that at PAX yeah, as so well. You, yeah. Yeah. So um, they, they, it's kind of like Octopath Traveler a little bit. So I highly recommend checking them out. The, uh, I did an interview with the um, developer at PAX East. Mm-hmm. And very very fun interview uh he actually ended up giving me some uh trinkets which i i know is somewhere in here yeah yeah there, there it is he gave me i haven't even opened it because i don't want to open it but like gave me the the character mm-hmm. and things like that so yeah i, I definitely say alterian shift is a it's an indie game um to check out that's like one of my recommendations you're talking about like a mainstream game final fantasy no. <laughs> nah, it's all good. I, 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 we like to give love to the indies on this show as well. So, like, yeah, check everyone go check out Alterium Shift. Um, they are also a team that's deep in the heart of Texas as well. So, definitely showing some love to the Texas boys over there as well. So, DDS, it's been really fun having you on the show. I can't yeah, wait to have you fun. back. Yeah, I can't wait to have you back, man. I, I'd love, I love chopping it up with you. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. You can find this on all your favorite podcast platforms and on, you know, YouTube.com on the Pro Nerd Report YouTube channel. And you can check us out on the Pro Nerd Report Discord channel. You can talk to me there, ask me a question about the next episode of the show and get all your news on the podcast and the YouTube channel. So definitely go check uh, check us out there. In the meanwhile, I've been Sebastian. That's been DDS. And we're out. Peace. Bye, everyone. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Also, for more videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here. Thanks again for watching the video, and for more like it, stay right here at the Pro Nerd Report channel. So, that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. I also want to let you know about the single player experience Discord server. It's a perfect place for single player gamers to talk about the good single player games that they've been playing lately, and to get video game recommendations. Think of it kind of like a book club for single player gamers. The link to join will be in the description. Once you're in, feel free to share your video game backlog list, talk about the good single player games you've been playing, or give your feedback on the show. If you have a game you think should be recommended and should be reviewed, let me know about it right there.